Hello, and welcome back to the Cracking Fang YouTube channel. Today we're going to be solving lead code problem 31, next permutation. Before we get into the solution for this, I just want to say I hate this problem. Hate, hate, hate. This is my least favorite problem. And I just want to say I know how to solve it. I know the solution, and I think I can explain it pretty well. But if you want a deep understanding of the intuition behind it, sorry, I have no idea. This is just one where I understand it enough to get through, but if you want a proof of why it works, this isn't the video for you. I can't do it, I hate this problem. So, that being said, let's read the question prompt. It's quite a mouthful. A permutation of an array of integers is an arrangement of its members into a sequence of linear order. For example, for array one, two, three, the following are considered permutations of array. 1, 2, 3, 1, 3, 2, 3, 1, 2, 2, 3, 1. The next permutation of an array of integers is the next lexicographically greater permutation of its integers. Wow, they really need to proofread this. They are missing like spelling everywhere. Anyway, more formally, if all the permutations of an array are sorted in one container according to their lexicographical order, then the next permutation of that array is the permutation that follows it in the sorted container. If such arrangement is not possible, the array must be rearranged as the lowest possible order, i.e. sorted in ascending order. For example, the next permutation of 1, 2, 3 is 1, 3, 2. Similarly, the next permutation of array 3, 2, 1 is 3, 1, 2. While the next permutation of 3, 2, 1 is 1, 2, 3 because 3, 2, 1 does not have a lexicographically larger rearrangement. Given an array of integers nums, find the next permutation of nums. The replacement must be in place and use only constant extra memory. So if we look at our example here with the numbers one, two, three, obviously the next biggest number that we can form with this is gonna be one, three, two, right? Because all of our possible options are three, two, one. We could have three, one, two. We could have two, one, three. We could have two, three, one, or one, oops, you can't see that, or one, three, two. And obviously this is the smallest uh, number that comes after this one. Each one of these is bigger than this. So obviously this is our next permutation here. So we read the question prompt. We looked at an example, although the example is quite simple. We need to put this into some sort of algorithm to solve it. I'm gonna wipe away all this text here because it's taking up too much room and we're gonna come back and actually think about how we might solve this. Okay, we read the question prompt and we looked at a very simple example, but unfortunately it's not really gonna be that straightforward because the numbers are usually going to be a little bit trickier and it's harder to actually derive what happens when you look at you know this basic example of one, two, three. It doesn't really tell us how to do it. So. Let's think about the two cases that can happen in this problem, which the problem description tells us. The first is that there actually is no next permutation, and this is the case where we have something like three, two, one. Because this is already the largest number we can get by rearranging these three numbers, the next permutation is just going to be the wraparound. So basically it becomes the smallest number we can get. So in, if basically our input is sorted in descending order, from left to right, then we just return the reverse of our input and that's our answer. So that's the first case that you need to take care of. The other case is when you actually need to find the permutation. So let's look at, you know, one, four, five, eight, seven, right? This is our number. What is our next permutation here? Well, we can see that if we swap the seven and the five, we'll get, um, you know, the next one, because right, we want to swap and then we also need to swap the five and the eight after we do the swap. So it would be one, four, seven, eight, uh, five, eight is the next larger number, right? So how did we actually do this? What we want to do here for this problem. And again, I'm sorry, I don't know why this works. I, I can't give you the proof for this, but I can just tell you how to solve this problem. What we want to do is we want to find the point in our array where it stops being um, increasing, starting from the left, right? So we can see that one, four, five, we basically wanna find the point where the array stops being sorted 
uh, if it is even sorted at all it could just be that it's not sorted in which case that's fine i guess the first number would just be sorted and we'll call the number where the array sorry the index where the array stops being sorted as our pivot so in this case eight is our pivot here uh sorry five is the pivot apologies because at this number this is the final um value that is in sorted order right seven and eight are not in sorted order so we need to make some swap with five with one of these numbers here that's not in sorted order and what we want to do and the way that we're going to do this is we're going to start from the right and we're going to go left and basically we're looking for the point where nums of i is actually greater than nums of i minus one right so this would be this eight right because that would imply this is when the first point where the array stops being um increasing uh starting from the left sorry so going from the right apologies so we will identify um our pivot as this eight so basically we oh sorry this is the number where it stops um i guess increasing as we're going to the left and then our pivot is actually the index before it so it's going to be this one so the 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 point where nums of i is actually greater than nums of i minus one so this becomes our pivot and then what we want to do is we're going to start from the right again and what we want to do is we want to take the first number that is greater than our pivot and the reason that we want the first number that's greater than is because that will be the smallest possible number that we can swap with and the reason that this works is remember we're going from left to sorry, fuck i keep saying uh, the wrong way we're going from right to left and we're finding the first point where the array going from right to left is not sorted so because this portion is sorted in uh, I guess increasing order right it's going up as we go to the left when we swap this this will be you know whatever that first number is is going to be the smallest possible one that satisfies you know our next permutation uh, condition here so what we do is we swap it with the first number starting from the right that is bigger than the, the pivot number that we've identified earlier so let's do that swap so we'll say one four seven eight five now unfortunately this isn't our answer right we need to swap the five and the eight and remember that this part of the array after the pivot was sorted before in increasing order like we saw so that means that if we actually reverse this array right we'll actually get this part uh as the net smallest one right because if this is sorted in increasing order if we then reverse it then it's going to be um, sorted in decreasing order which is the next smallest arrangement of these numbers and if this doesn't make sense i invite you to play around with this remember the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to find the pivot and again these diagrams suck and i think it's much easier to look at this in code and kind of get what we need to do but essentially we want to find the pivot index and then what we want to do is we want to swap uh, with I guess first num to the right of pivot such that um, let's see the num is greater than yeah it's just greater than the pivot right and that's going to be our swap and then we just need to reverse so reverse uh, to the right of the pivot and that will get the right side of the array uh, after the pivot in the right order. And remember, the reason that we do that is because we are going from right to left, looking for the point where this array stops increasing, right? So we go from seven to eight because that's increasing, but then when we hit the five, it stops increasing. So this is our pivot point. Then we swap it with the first largest number greater than five to the right of the pivot point so the first largest number to the right of five is going to be the seven then we need to just reverse this because remember this part was sorted that was kind of our original search condition here and then once we reverse this we'll have it in the right order 
because now it'll be in that sorted order and now we'll have our next permutation which is our answer again I don't know how to prove that this works I just know that this is the solution and this is the most optimal way to do it this is the best I can do I'm sorry so let's actually go write the code hopefully that will make things clearer and if it doesn't I don't know maybe go play around with the diagrams if you have leak code premium go look at the solution maybe you can read it and understand uh, this is just one of those questions like I said I absolutely hate this problem it is terrible uh, how you're supposed to figure this out on an interview I have no idea you're probably gonna fail if you get this and you haven't memorized it um, so yeah I, I have no idea I hate this problem so let's actually go to the editor and write this out and be done with this abomination of a problem okay we're back in the editor let's write the code for this so we can be done with this abomination of a problem and we never have to see it again so remember that we need to look for the pivot point if it exists remember it can possibly not exist in the case that we have something like three two one where there is no pivot and all we need to do is simply reverse the array so let's say our pivot is going to be equal to none because in the beginning we don't have one and remember we're going to be going from right to left looking for the point where the array going from right to left stops increasing uh, for when it's going right to left so we're going to say for i in range uh, len nums minus one and remember we're going to the left oops uh, sorry we're going to the zero uh, index this time instead of the minus one because remember we're comparing with the or comparing index i with index i minus one so we can't actually go to that uh, final index because we'll have an out of bounds error so we're gonna say if nums if nums of i is actually greater than nums of i minus one then what we want to do is that is our pivot point and remember that it's the index minus one the pivot is the actual number that um, is the smaller one so for example like in our code I think it was uh, what did we use so we used one five uh, four five eight seven so we go from the right okay is nums of i so is seven greater than five, uh, eight no it's not so we keep going is eight greater than five yes so that means that our pivot is actually going to be this five so we want to say that our pivot equals to the i minus one and at this point we found the pivot and we can actually break out of this loop now what we want to do is we want to add an else statement to our for loop and if you don't know how else statements work with for loops essentially if the for loop completes if it goes through the entire iteration here and doesn't return or break or some sort of you know exit out of the loop early then this else condition gets run so in this case if we go through the entire array and we don't find a pivot that means that the array from right to left is actually uh, increasing the entire time so this is gonna be the case that we have one two three right that means that it's sorted in increasing order from right to left which is that case where we actually don't have a pivot so in this case all we need to do is actually just nums dot reverse and then return and it actually tells us not to return anything we just modify nums in place that's why we just modify it and then we just return now what we want to do is we found our pivot now we need to find that first point that's actually great the first number to the right of our pivot it's greater than pivot and we can make the swap so in this case it's the seven so what we're gonna say is we're gonna say swap and this is gonna be the index of the swap we're gonna say length of nums minus one and we're gonna say while nums of swap is actually less than or equal to nums of pivot remember we're looking for the num the first number from right to left that is greater than the pivot because this is the next biggest number that we want to swap with to get the smallest number when we actually you know return our permutation here so while you know we have numbers that are you know less than our pivot obviously it doesn't work that way because if we swapped it we'd get a smaller number and we can't have that we need the next bigger number so we need to find the smallest possible next number we can and because the array is sorted from right to left as we kind of established in this part the first number that we find from right to left that satisfies our condition will be the one that we want to swap with so we want to basically until we find that point where this is no longer true we just want to decrement swap 
and we're guaranteed to find it in this part of the array. So now what we need to do is actually swap the numbers. So we're going to say nums of pivot. Remember, pivot is our actual index, not the number. And then swap is also the index. So we need to swap these. So we're going to say, oops, comma, nums of swap equals to nums of swap and then nums of pivot. So we're going to swap these two. And then what we want to do, we want to say nums. Remember that after we make the swap, so seven gets swapped with five, we need to swap this part of the array. I'm sorry, not swap. We need to reverse it so that way we can get the order. Because remember, this part is sorted in, you know, increasing order as we're going from right to left. So to get it in the smallest possible representation of these numbers, we just need to reverse it and that will have it in the opposite order. And then we're basically done. So we want to uh, reverse everything from the left of our pivot index. So we want to say nums of pivot plus one, everything to the right of that. We want to say revert is going to be equal to reversed nums of pivot plus uh, plus one. Basically, we just want to reverse everything to the left of the pivot. And that's all you need to do. Um, we just return here. Let's actually make sure we didn't make any bugs anywhere and submit this. And cool, we see that it runs. So what is the time complexity for this algorithm? Well, in the worst case, we're going to make one entire pass through our array. And this is going to be the case where essentially we need to um, you know, go through to figure out that actually there is no next permutation. In that case, all we need to do is we would go from right to left an entire time. And then we need, uh, you know, a left to right iteration to actually reverse the numbers. So it would just be big O of n plus big O of n. So that's, you know, 2n, but asymptotically, this is still just big O of n. And like the problem description told us, uh, we do this in place and we don't use any memory. So as you can see, we haven't defined any extra data structures. Uh, the reverses happen in place and therefore our space complexity is going to be big O of one. So that is how you solve this problem. Hopefully looking at the code made things a little bit clearer. I think this is one where you may need to play around with it a little bit, find some numbers, try the algorithm, prove to yourself that it works. I apologize if this isn't the best explanation in the world. I'm not going to lie. Like I said, I absolutely hate this problem. And I'm not going to lie to you. When I was uh, interviewing for you know companies that asked this, I just memorized it. I, I have absolutely no idea how the proof for this problem works. Um, this is just one that I memorized. And if I got it, which thank the Lords, I never got in an interview. Um, you know, I was just going to regurgitate it, try to explain it as best as I can. If they ask questions about stuff, then, you know, hope for the best. But this, I hate this problem. And I pray to God that you do not see this in an interview um, because this, this is just number one bullshit. So uh, thank you for watching this video. Hopefully uh, you haven't been too put off by my um, rambling and hatred of this problem. I promise uh, my other videos are not like this. Uh, I just really, really hate this problem, as you can tell. Anyway, thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like and comment. Uh, you can comment, you know, I hate this problem too, fuck this problem, whatever you want in the comment section below. Anything helps with the YouTube algorithm. If you want to see more content like this one, obviously not this problem because it sucks, but um, if you want to see more videos like this, then please subscribe to the channel. Otherwise, thank you and have a nice day. Bye.